welcome to the LARP House. This week I am going to show you how to make your very own custom creature teeth and you can make it all out of stuff that you can find at the craft store. So, you're welcome. Before we get started, I do want to remind everyone that we are now doing the in-character interviews annually and we have a bunch of other different types of interviews. So check out our interview master post below if you want to be on the show. Rhyme. And now without further ado, let's uh, let's get weird. Let's talk supplies. You are going to need food coloring in red, yellow, and blue. This stuff is called friendly plastic. They are plastic pellets that become sculptable when exposed to high heat, and they are non-toxic so you can put them in your face. This is the only resin that I could find that is FDA approved for long contact with liquid and food substances, safe to put in your face once fully cured. You are going to need a spoon, a pair of pliers, and some scissors a heat gun, and a cup of water. And a mirror so you can see what you're sculpting. And we're gonna start by taking our red food coloring, setting it close by, and getting a spoonful of the friendly plastic pellets, and putting the heat gun on the lowest setting on the lowest temperature. Otherwise, you're going to make your beads just fly everywhere. And heat them up until they are transparent, like water. And how I sculpt with my friendly plastic is to dip my hands in a cup of room temperature or cold water so that I don't burn myself when I touch the plastic. It cools down pretty fast so that you won't be in constant danger of burning yourself, but initially when you take it off of the spoon, it could be it could be pretty hot, so don't don't be a dummy. You can also just dip the friendly plastic pellets in boily water. But I'm not I don't want to heat up a cup of water 500 times. So I'm just putting one drop of food coloring, which, you know, it will get all over your hands, but what can you do? If you wear gloves while working with the friendly plastic, it'll stick to your gloves, but separate it into two little portions, put it on a paper plate, save it for later. Now we're gonna heat up round two. This is the bit of plastic that is actually going to make up the bone part of our teeth. We're just heating it up again, going through all that nonsense. Water, finger protection. It's really, it's just like sprinkling fairy dust on my hands at that point. But I'm gonna make a flat slab of the plastic, and once it's cool enough to not stick, lay that on the paper plate and leave it to cool down and harden completely. And now we're on to the first sculpting step. I'm gonna take one of the portions of the gum colored plastic and heat it up till it's relatively clear. And give it a moment to cool down till it's safe temperature for your mouth. I do not wanna hear about a bunch of my nerds burning their faces off, so be careful. Now split this portion into two smaller halves. And I'm just going to press it onto the tooth that we want to make creaturey. And the way I do it, uh, the way I minimize the lispiness that happens when you have fake teeth in is to put a lot of the anchoring uh, plastic in the space between my upper lip and my teeth rather than um, back behind my teeth on the roof of my mouth because that'll that that's a real good way to instantly make your speech more difficult, is to alter the space that your tongue is accustomed to in there. So, uh, up and over the tooth rather than under and back is how, is how you want to sculpt it. And going on for around two. Just leave it in once, once it's got a pretty snug fit because it needs to harden completely before you take it out or you're going to ruin all of that beautiful work. Make sure to get it way up in there because that's that's going to be what holds your tooth in place. Trim off excess bits if, it, if a little bit too much gets um, behind your teeth onto the roof of your mouth. You want it to go like hook over your tooth just a little bit, but you don't want it to actually go behind 
onto the flesh of the roof of your mouth. So trim it up, make it, make it so it feels comfortable. And then just leave that in until it hardens completely. You know, maybe get a couple gum glamour shots. Uh, you do you. Next step is to take that now hardened and cooled down slab of plastic and just cut out tooth shapes. May seem a little bit arbitrary, but but trust me, the you don't need a lot of bulk. Um, we've already got a lot of bulk built up on the tooth as it is. Then make sure it's the size that you want. You don't want them to be super long or anything. Trim if necessary. Then hold the pointy end with your pliers, heat up the base of it, and smush it on to what you've already got. Then once it's smushed on, you can take it out, you can reheat it, you can reshape it. Um, you, can, you can noodle away it at this point until you've got a general shape that you like. <laughs> Next step is to create that false gum line so that these teeth really blend in with your natural gums and, and teeth. So I've just heated up a little bit of the gum colored stuff, rolled a small coil of it, and I'm smushing that on and only blending it in on one side, leaving the other side, the lower side, a little harsh. You'll see what I mean in just a second. If you want your teeth to be a little bit less noticeable, a little bit less obvious, make your gum line a lot thinner than mine was. I wanted my fangs to look like they're the retractable snaky type, so I made my gums like real thick and, and big. But that's just me. And you know, I stick them back in my face, make sure that they fit, and this is what they look like without any paint or finishing. Not, uh, not too bad. And now we're finally on to the finishing coat. I am using Amazing Clear Cast, that FDA approved resin that I told you about earlier. People will use a bunch of different stuff for the top coat, but this is really the only truly safe clear coat there is to finish off your teeth. And I have mixed up one drop each of red, yellow, and blue food coloring to make this reddish brown color and mixed it with a little bit of the resin. This is really slow curing resin, so it is okay to mix it beforehand and let it harden up a little bit. But once I've got that color blended, I'm just getting it into the little crevices of the teeth. And this is sticky work, so wear your gloves. But really, you know, get it into the, the little details and smooth it out. This will help blend the gums into your real gums and make them look more realistic. It's just uh, it's an overall good idea. And this resin takes a full seven days to cure, but uh, once, once it does... <laughs> These are so cool! <laughs> Snicky snick person. <gasps> I'm one of the stable. So what is going to help you minimize your lisp even more is to practice talking in these and then, you know, the whole putting the gums and the anchoring up in the front of the mouth as opposed to inside the mouth because when you add a bunch of bulk on the inside to try to anchor some teeth down, it can really mess with the way your tongue knows how to make words. <laughs> try a... Uh, Try not to do that. So that's all I have for you this week. Be sure to stay tuned for future episodes because I will have a behind the scenes look at College of Wizardry coming soon if you guys liked the first College of Wizardry, the Willow Vlogs video. And I am starting to come out with even more cool videos and stuff for patrons only. So if you guys like the show and you want to help us succeed, then please consider checking out our Patreon because we really do depend on you guys and you make this possible. So thank you. And remember, we love you, we cherish you, and if you have any questions, comments, or emotional outbursts, please feel free to message us. We are on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, and Instagram. And as always, nerds, like us, subscribe to us, fight with us. I'm sweating like cheese in the sun. I gotta go. We gotta leave. We, we're done here. <laughs>